Today, we're looking at a brown ink by Sailor, Piano Mahogany. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, there's timestamps down below so that if you're in a hurry, you can skip around. But if you got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. You can also follow me over on Instagram. And if you're new here, I would invite you to subscribe. In order to make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then inked up this Retro 51 Tornado with a broad nib. I used it to write for a day and to take the notes for this video. In order to standardize some of the writing sample, I always use Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. Now, more t papers are tested, and they'll show up a bit later. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in sample form, so it came in a vial that looks something like this. And to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet Extra Fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 is no feather spread, halo sheen, and no real shading. Now, the Extra Fine is slightly darker than the stub. It has no feather spread, halo sheen. There's some shade, sort of, there's a couple spots that are a little lighter, like the word over is a little lighter than the word quick. Brown is certainly lighter than the word fox or the. But it's not a lot of shading within the writing itself. Eight seconds to dry. The medium is about the same tone as the extra fine. It has no feather spread, halo sheen, no real shading, 12 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We're not really getting a lot in the writing. Tomoe River. No bleeding, normal Tomoe River ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. Now the extra fine is a little bit darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, and 15 seconds to dry. The medium is darker a little bit more than the extra fine. It has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 26 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both shows no color variation because we're not getting any. Tomoy River, no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. Now the extra fine is about the same tone as the stub. No feather spread, halo sheen. There are a couple darker spots, like the letter K in quick, the word the, but that's about it, and 13 seconds to dry. Now medium is much darker than the extra fine. It has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 20 seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine shows some color variation, although we're really not getting it. The medium shows us none, and we really didn't get any. I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see this very light purple on the bottom that pushes its way up into a red. And at the very top of it, we see hints of some kind of yellow or orange tone with a very thin line of a kind of highlighter blue type of color. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. Now that purpley tone that was on the bottom forms a line on the bottom that's much more there. It certainly looks like it's gotten into the paper and isn't budging. The red that pushes up pushes up fairly evenly all the way and the orange that's around is much more noticeable now. Uh, it hasn't, it, it's got itself free of the red to really be seen. And that highlighter blue across the top, much more noticeable on the second chromatography. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it might be to clean from your pen. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it handled itself very well. I would feel safe using this in a note-taking situation because that ink barely noticed being highlighted. Looking at the water, it removed most of the stuff, but not really that blue tone that we saw in the second chromatography. It's really into the paper there and not budging a whole lot. Now, pen flush had a lot of the same type of problems. It's not a blue, it's, it's much muddier a color. I think it might be breaking the ink up but it's not doing great at it at the moment. 
The one third bleach solution is completely removing it from the paper, but it leaves this weird kind of browning stain in the paper. Now, I didn't have any real trouble. I think this is getting into the paper better than it would into a pen. I didn't have to go any farther than pen flush to get this ink out of my pen. For the inks I've tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5 with a realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Now I'm gonna link a video where I show how I test it and how I calculate the data. Sailor's Piano Mahogany has a viscosity of 2.3, making it normal. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples. And for the inks I've tested, I found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with a realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Sailor's Piano Mahogany has an average dry time of 16 seconds, making it again normal. Instead of finding inks that look like Sailor's Piano Mahogany, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. So I went with a very bright green, Diamine's Apple Glory. The second writing sample is done on P. Berger and Vinta paper. Here we're looking at P. Berger, a student grade French ruled paper. Now we see that there's a lot of bleed that's going on, a lot of show through that's going on. It does not touch the page underneath, but it does make the back of the page unusable. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is a little bit darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade and five seconds to dry. Now the medium is much darker than the extra fine. The medium does have feathering that's going on, looking at the word over, looking at the word the, looking at the word quick. A lot of feathering spots going on. No spread halo sheen shade, six seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no real color variation and we didn't get it in the writing. Last up is Vinta Notebooks, The Modern Traveler. Now, when it comes to, let's put that underneath, when it comes to the medium, we have a lot more show through, although it's not really too bad. There are some bleed spots where it's getting heavier into the page, but it's not touching the page underneath. This is the scrubby. So it does pretty well for a pocket notebook and just jotting down some notes. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is slightly darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, four seconds to dry. The medium is definitely darker than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen or shade and six seconds to dry. The scrubby for both showed us no color variation. We didn't expect it and we didn't get it. And that is all that I have for the writing sample. So what do I think of Sailor's Piano Mahogany? Now there's a slight magenta lean in this ink as a tone, this is certainly not for me. I know there's a lot of people that very much like it. This is too dark and I really didn't get the shading. Now there's certain things that I very much care for in brown inks. Browns are very difficult to make me very happy with because I've really nailed it down to like my top 50 brown inks. Like there's a lot that I really like with browns. This one's just not for me. It's not bad. It's just not for me. So what nib and pen give the best writing experience with this ink? I found that dry fines or mediums really put it down so that you can appreciate the brown tone of this ink, where a wet pen made it much darker and any shading capability you have goes away with that very wet pen. I'm gonna remind you that I'm here every day with a new ink review. Thanks for watching.